Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today we got definitely an interesting one for you. Um, today we're going to go ahead and be talking about the latest Righteous Fire build in Last Epoch. Now I haven't made much content uh, this cycle because primarily I played a Blade Dancer and my build ended up being bugged and sabotaged. So we had to pretty much scrap that character and work on another one. And that's where we went to our No Bugs Confirmed Shaman, but then and I really wasn't feeling it, so we ended up landing on a Rune Master. Now, before I go ahead and get started with this, I want to drop two things real fast. I want to say that uh, the original concept of where I built this character was from a guy on YouTube called Action RPG, so I'm going to have his video linked down there below. Not like carbon copying one for one, I just took an idea, and naturally things are going to be very similar. But I'm in the very early stages, I haven't looked at any endgame stuff. So with that being said, let's go run a quick monolith real fast and see where it takes us. So let's go. I am currently in the ending of the storm on this character and you do not need any unique items to get started. You can quite literally just play fire aura right off the bat. I cannot talk about end game. I have no idea on that stuff. This is going to focus more on just the early mid stages. Then again, like I said, we'll, we'll go from there and see. So. The concept of the build is not like other builds I've played. A lot of other RF style builds in Epoch are, they just aren't really the same thing. They're very conditional. You have to use four skills to press it. This one is quite literally like as simple as it gets. Whether I am walking around using Scorching Ray or using my movement skill, you are pretty much triggering your Flame Aura, which is over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started go through and clear this monolith and show you guys what it looks like. And you'll notice on Rune Master, there are these three colorful little things over here. Those are basically your runes. There is an invocation to create um, Fire Aura. The invocation for it is basically uh, Fire Cold Fire, which creates the Fire Aura. It creates four stacks of it. So literally when you are clearing, with this little skill here, Flame Rush, it's spec to automatically trigger and then go off automatically. So at the moment, this is quite literally one button gameplay for just clearing, as simple as it gets. Now, when you're doing single target, like you see this guy here, I'll also go ahead and channel the Scorching Ray. I'll press my Invocation to get more stacks. We'll channel Scorching Ray again. We'll press our Flame Ward. And if we're getting, like say, we're actually taking damage because our ward's going down, when you use your Flame Rush, you actually get a big burst of ward um, at the beginning, the channeling, and at the end. So there's no harm in, like, bouncing around. Like, you don't lose damage, basically, for, like, moving around. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump out of there, and let's talk about the character. All right, so let's start from the basics. I know I said you don't need any uniques, and I'm using one. I actually just found this, and it's literally minimum rolled across the board. Uh, prior to this, I was using, um, where are those really cool ones? Let's see, what is the base called? I thought I had one in my inventory, but I may have deleted it by accident. Whoops. Let's see, what is the base called? One of these right here. Uh, Opulent Focus is very good as a, as a thing before this because it gives a shit ton of int, a lot of ward per second, and a lot of ward retention. And then you can just look for like LE damage, fire damage, etc. All the different modifiers. So that's pretty much where I was going with this. The way I acquired the uh, Ignavar's head is you see how this says like rank four. So that means Circle of Fortune rank four. So I was using my Runes of Ascendance because with uh, Circle of Fortune two, you have a 45% chance for it to be preserved. Okay, anyway, let's talk about the build. So I started leveling originally with pretty much insert uh, fire skill. So it was fireball. Um, there's a really good low level weapon, I think called like Ignifar's Torch. Um, that synergizes really well with fire skills. So quite literally just whatever you want. The action ARPG guy might have a more in-depth leveling section here. I also have my live stream Twitch. So you can just watch everything on how I leveled over the past couple days. Once I was able to get Disintegrate and Elemental Nova, I believe it was, I pretty much just went Ellie Nova and then Disintegrate right away. Now, Disintegrate is interesting because this is our primary single target skill. And the reason why it's interesting is they made a patch recently in, in this specific one we're playing now, this version, where channeling skills now also take your mono region into account. Prior, your mono region would be zero. 
What this means is you're able to sustain the mana much better. So if you look, channel cost is 14. When I'm channeling Incinerate, I don't go down unless I'm in the higher stages. So this makes it a lot smoother. Now there's one specific thing on top of this that made everything butter for me. In the campaign, you're not gonna have the mana to just spam your Incinerate and it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Unless you find a wand base or a scepter with a specific affix, or minus spell mana cost. The minus spell mana cost applies to channeling skills, making them cost way less mana. So very, very good. You can find this a lot on early wands, but there's also an affix for percent spell damage and minus mana cost. That can work too. You cannot pair those together, so you cannot put that on a wand, but you can put it on a scepter. This is why we're gonna favor wands, I believe, so we don't have to worry about that modifier. Anyway, you can pretty much see everything I took in Disintegrate here. Now, personally, um, I would not really worry about going Inferno at the beginning, as Fire Aura did not really do a lot of damage at the beginning and took some time to ramp up, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So you can pretty much see everything I've got here. I want to try out Twin Beam, but for the most part, we've got like Escalation, so we can go into Tier 2, and then we've got Tier 3, and then you've got Intensify, which makes it so that your stages build faster, and then on top of the stages building faster, with uh, Leucomancer and Resurgence, if you look here, right? I now have this buff. You see this? So if I were to stop and recast, I stay at that, which is pretty nice. Because when you're bossing, oftentimes you'll have to move around. So I'll move with the movement skill and then recast, and then I kind of get the stacks back. So very, very clean play style. It's not like Judgment Paladin that I played before where you're like going back in time and you have to recharge. I did not like that. It was, I liked it for a little bit and then it just got too much. So that pretty much is disintegrate. Now, your Runic Invocation here is very interesting because we've been doing a lot of testing with this. Um, maybe not testing per se, but more so asking the community on what works and what doesn't. The bread and butter here on what you want to get is your Runic Invocation and your Flame Rush synergize together. So under your Runic Invocation, you want to grab your Immutable Order along with the uh, Author of Arcana. Essentially, this makes it so directly casting it is free. But this makes it so whenever you gain runes, instead of it depending on the type of skill, it will always result in the sequence mirroring your first three skills. So TLDR, when you normally would channel Disintegrate, you would get Fire, Fire, Fire. As you can see, I do not have Fire, Fire, Fire. I have Fire, Ice, Fire. Fire, Ice, Fire is what makes the Flame Aura. So now if we go ahead and jump over to Flame Rush, you will see down at the bottom here, you cast Runic Invocation when you exit Flame Rush if you have it on your action bar. So, if we just look here, see how I have Fire, Ice, Fire? This will automatically detonate that and give me my fire stacks. Furthermore, if we go back to our Flame Rush, which one is it over here? Um, there was one specifically I was trying to remember. Is it actually this one? When you exit, if you have it on your bar, there is one that makes it so it channels. I don't remember which it is, but if you look here, it's channeling the runes as I go. Or maybe that's because, is it tagged as a channel? Ah, oh, okay, never mind. It's tagged as a channel, and that's why, never mind, never mind. I'm, I'm even still figuring it out myself. So the reason it goes cold is because of this here. So under the flame rush, if we scroll over here, we convert it to lightning, which doesn't matter. We're converting it to lightning just so we can convert it to cold. Um, this cold right here is what gives us the tag for cold. So if you look here, we have fire, cold, and then I'm guessing it either takes the flame rush again as fire. Um, that's why it's fire, cold, fire. I'm not exactly sure, but it, it works in this order. And that's really all that matters there. Uh, some other stuff I have taken on this skill specifically is mana efficiency with cooldown recovery and reduced damage taken along with Celestial Guidance. Although I'm not sure how much Celestial Guidance is buffing me. I, I think it does work for the Fiery Overload, but that's about it for Frenzy. Over here, I wanted to get speed and range, but when I'm fighting a boss, oftentimes I use the Flame Rush in the boss fight, and I already can fly a screen. And the prob the only clunky thing that can occur is sometimes like say, uh, I'm gonna move over here and I hit a wall and I pop. And if I pop, it will not cast the correct invocation because maybe I'm only fire cold and then it popped, right? So if you look here, fire cold pop. That's not flame aura. That's like another skill. That's kind of how rune master works. Based off of the um, <clears throat> the uh, runes you pull, it's going to end up with a different result, right? Okay. Um, 
Let me go back to the runic invocation. So the other stuff I have put points into would be Transcriber of Power, which is giving us flat spell damage, which is very, very good in general. You want flat damage for this build. Each instance of Righteous Fire that is on you is all benefiting from the flat damage, which is very, very big here. I'm also experimenting with uh, Runic Energy and essentially trying to get this to double cast. Hasn't really been very noticeable yet, so these are definitely fluff, but I'm happy with the other stuff that I have put in here. During leveling, you can actually use Runic Invocation to kind of nuke a big pack on fire, fire, fire. And taking this node uh, right here makes it so it completely refunds the mana cost. Even though it puts a cooldown, it can still be very, very ideal for leveling because it just basically pops so many mobs. So this is a nice one. Now, Flame Ward is your bread and butter defensive skill. I uh, haven't paid too much attention to everything in here since at, at the moment the character still feels very tanky. But basic things you want to get is essentially Astonish if you are like me and are lazy. You cast Flame Ward when you get stunned. So this is very nice because your Flame Ward also will automatically activate a singular Fire Aura, but also give Fire Aura 15% more damage. This is something you'll pick up a little bit later here. You can also get 250% fire damage while it's active, which is very strong. You can also get flat fire damage here, and I'm going to go ahead and get Flame Render here for haste so I can clear a bit quicker. Other than that, I currently have Focus. Now, Focus is a placeholder. Um, focus essentially is only really used on boss fights for me since I, I don't really need the MP when I'm mapping. Um, focus is basically just meant so that when I dump all of my MP, so if you watch here... I'm just going to go ahead and let this drain. It'll drain real fast, I promise. Essentially, when the MP drains, focus is used as a buffer to pull it back and regenerate it. So that way there isn't a weird clunky style. Later on, I believe uh, players will swap this with the later on uh, skill I will show you. So this is focus right here. Instant and it's back, right? Then you even get haste, which is actually really nice for boss fights. So... Later on, I believe you go into Glyph of Dominion, but I haven't gotten to that point in my character, so I haven't even looked at the skill yet. This is something I'll figure out later. Okay, talking about the character sheet and then the items. So, talking about the character sheet here, or the, sorry, the skill tree. Uh, Mage, you can kind of see what I favored. Uh, Int is very strong, so Int primary, and then I went with Elementalist here. You could go for, like, the cast speed, but I didn't feel the cast speed was necessary, so I left that alone. That's only going to be for the Scorching Ray. And then Reactive Ward into Ward Retention is what I decided on. Now you'll notice I am a Rune Master, but I have a lot of points in Sork, Rune Master, and Spellblade. Let's talk about that. If your Mana sucks, uh, Mana Shell into Wisdom is very strong. Uh, this is a very good combination. You get flat Mana, percent Mana, and you get an additional little bit more regen based off your max Mana. And then this one over here is giving mana with ward per second with additional ward per 10 max mana. Very solid. Calculated destruction is very good for when you get the offhand I'm using because it will help spike up your crit rate, which gives you damage on disintegration with the specific item. Next up, you'll see I went into Pyromancer just so I could get a little bit of ignite chance for one of the nodes on the Scorching Ray. And then Lava Mancer, because I believe Fire Pen is very strong. I haven't actually tested it, but I, I believe Penetration is very strong in this game. In Spellblade, this is where I would say the build starts to take off. Until you have your points in Spellblade, it will not feel as Righteous Fire-like. You'll feel more like a Scorching Ray build. And this is primarily because if you look over here on Spellblade, Flame Walker makes it so when you're walking, you have a chance to generate it and it's double the chance if you don't have it. The reason this is important is when you're low level and you don't have good mana sustain, this is a good way for you to generate it. So for example, if I start moving right now, you'll notice on the bar, it will say one. That's a stack right there, two stacks down, three stacks now. So this is a very good way to generate it when you have no resources that you can pretty much use, right? You know, before you get flame rush and you can start activating it or you can spam disintegration, right? This is a very, very, very clean way to do it. You can put as many points as you want. I pretty much put five in just to get the fire res shred and I might come back into this in the future. And then the big bread and butter, incinerating aura. It gives you big AoE, so it's actually relevant. It gives you int and also gives you flat damage for int. This is 
very strong. So this is why you want to stack Int with this build. I haven't been at the point of stacking Int yet, but Int also buffs your... <clears throat> Int also buffs your Disintegrate, and Int also buffs your Ward by giving you Ward Retention, which makes it so you can have essentially higher Ward before it starts to decay. So all of that really kind of rolls in together. Now, if I go over to the Runemaster section, um, you can see what we have here. So I went into Quintessence of Triumph. I don't actually know how the more spell damage works exactly. You deal more spell damage if you have more current ward than the target has remaining health. I'm just going to say yes. Uh, so I, I went with that. Um, over here, I have Sphere of Protection, which we're going to put points into later since I will pretty much have something ignited permanently. So this will help a lot on boss fights. Um, over here, I'm currently going into Mental Catalyst. Catalysis? I don't know how to say that. Uh, because it gives int and reduced damage taken from crits, so helps kind of even out, uh, even out spike damage. This is actually the tree I went into last. I got my Sork and Spellblade first, and then I went into Rune Master. I did put points in just to get Flame Rush, and then I canceled out of it. This node is also very good for Mono Regen, as it's doubled if you have at least 50 int, so this is giving me 24% Mono Regen, which is very nice. I actually don't have Mono Regen on like any of my gear, I'm not using mono regen uh, rings. I don't have mono regen suffixes. I don't have any special mono regen anywhere outside of just these gloves, which have a 21% roll. So really just from the tree, it's primarily sustaining, which is fantastic. Also just realized this relic is garbage. Pretty sure I picked this up at like level 10. I need to replace this ASAP. <laughs> We're gonna have to look at that. Holy, I did not know how bad that was. Okay, uh, next up, Relics. I'm not really doing anything crazy yet. Again, nothing is min-maxed here. Pretty much have, like, some Ward per second ones. Uh, ward per second helps really keep the buffer of Ward up. Other than that, it's pretty much just stuff to fill in the resistances. Uh, you can look for anything Flame Aura-oriented, uh, damage over time, fire damage, Ward-based. You know, pretty much any of those things would work. Other than that, I think we pretty much have covered most of it. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about my gear now, and then we're pretty much done here. So covering the gear, uh, my helmet, I know it's a static orb. I'm pretty much using it because it has a ton of damage on it. It's got the fire aura damage with the spell damage, and uh, it had the extra health roll. This came from the nemesis, as you can kind of tell, because it's like weird looking. So we're just going to use this as a pseudo offensive defensive piece. Really happy with that. Uh, this amulet, ideally you want elemental damage over time on the amulet. My amulet's like really crap. Uh, elemental damage over time has like very high values. Uh, for your weapon, I believe you want elemental damage over time. And then I don't know what is better between fire damage or any other modifier. And then for your suffix, I believe fire penetration is a very solid stat on weapons as well. Uh, for the body armor, I pretty much just have like an int vit. Not really sure. Pretty crappy piece of gear that needs to get replaced. Um, you can get really nice things like fire aura damage over time or fire damage over time like this modifier. This would be way better than like a vitality roll, for example. So we have a lot of room for improvement on the body armor. It is real bad. Rings, I literally picked up in the campaign and haven't removed them. I don't want to talk about them. Pretty much just movement speed to clear faster. Uh, belt can also hit elemental damage over time, which is very, very important. Very high sources of damage here. Um, gloves. Increased damage over time. Intelligence, pretty happy with those. Uh, boots I got lucky with. They've got uh, intelligence, attunement, uh, all res, reduced damage taken from crits, armor, movement speed. Uh, again, int, int being the primary role here. And that's pretty much about it. I can give a more updated, optimized, you know, opinion of the build as I play it more. But this is virtually no theory crafting, just pretty much playing through. And this is where we've gotten. So I'm very happy with the characters so far. I hope you guys also enjoy it. It really is the closest, like, to our Righteous Fire of the builds I have played. I was skeptical to play this at first because I have quite literally played maybe 15 different Flame Aura Spellblade builds uh, or Sork builds, but I haven't played Rune Master yet, and Rune Master really made the build feel a lot more comfortable. You know, having, having it basically proc off of Flame Rush while you're mapping is just so much quality of life, so... I really am enjoying it. Rune Master is a great addition to the classes. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. 
We've got new PoE teasers coming in, so the Epoch content's gonna end soon. And other than that, if you enjoyed the game, I have a link in the description below if you wanna support the stream and purchase from my Nexus. Take care, see you guys all tomorrow.